Miracles have occurred throughout history, but are there supernatural answers for the emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual needs we face today? Miracles still happen. And in the next few moments, Sam Luke will share practical insights into knowing the God of miracles. Join Sam and the Victory Tabernacle Church family as we encounter a God who makes miracles still happen. Hello, Pastor Sam here, and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. Thank you so much for joining us today on the program. You know, in the past, and I'm talking about ancient philosophers, taught their disciples by asking questions. They posed questions that required analytical thinking. And that's how we learn. Do you realize the three greatest questions that have ever been asked were not asked by Plato or Aristotle, but by God himself? And I want to share with you what those questions are today. And your answer to each of these questions can determine your destiny and your future. Life's three greatest questions. I want to send to you the entire message. We can't put everything on uh, the program. We're limited in the time we have. But I would like to send to you a CD of the entire message, Life, Life's Three Greatest Questions. So call me now at 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. Eight, one. And when you call, we're going to rush it to you right away. One more time, the number to call is 804-744-8881. Let's go together now to that service where the power of God is moving. And I'm speaking on the subject, life's three greatest questions. Now, I, I want you to follow me with this. Um, this is one of those things where you, you, you say, uh, how many questions are there? How, how, I mean, if God's asking the questions, surely he's got a lot to ask us. So, you know, what, what's this all about? Watch this. I'm going to share with you three questions that will change your life forever. And your answer will determine your destiny. Unfortunately, you are the only one who can answer this question. I mean, I can't answer, I can't answer these questions for you. But God wants to know three things. Number one, you ready? The first question God asked in Genesis chapter three, and you can turn there with me in your Bible if you want to. In the third chapter of the book of Genesis, God asked Adam and Eve three questions. And the first question is found in verse nine. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, where are you? God is concerned with your whereabouts. He wants to know where are you? See, he wants to know where are you in your relation to Christ? Where are you? Are you like some of the historical figures in the past? Oh, like Pilate who said, I'm washing my blood, my hands are the blood of this innocent man. Or King Agrippa, who told Paul when he presented the gospel, said, well, I, I'm almost persuaded to be a Christian, but it's, you know, I, I, I'm not there yet, you know. Or Felix, who said, well, you know, why don't we just get together at another time? It's not convenient for me right now, and so I'll just put this off and deal with it later. God is asking you today, right where you are, he's asking you, where are you as it relates to my son? Have you received him into your heart and life as your Savior and your Lord, or have you rejected him? Now, you can be religious and still go to hell. How many of you know that's true? There are many religions in the world. Islam, Islam is, is not a religion of peace. Somebody said, well, the word Islam means peace. No, sir. The word Islam means submission. And one of the things that we as Westerners don't understand about Islam is that Islam is not just religion. Islam is a form of government as well. So they've combined it into this kind of a theocracy so that if you are submitted to Allah, you're also going to keep all of the rules that are put in place and obey 
every command of Muhammad right down to the last letter, meaning that if you have to go to war, which is a jihad, a holy war, the only way you can be assured that you'll go to paradise is to spill your blood. When you die, then you can go to paradise. And there are people that actually believe that Allah and Jehovah God are the same God. Well, I read the Quran and you know what I found in there? I found a place that said that Allah is the God who has no son. Well, guess what I read in the gospel in John chapter three and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It must not be the same God. Guess what else I read? I read where the son said, therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down to myself. I have power to lay it down, I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Guess what else I read there? I read where John said in 1 John chapter four, he said that in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. And I've just come by to tell you that the way to heaven is still Jesus Christ. Acts 4.12 says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Buddhists will tell you, uh, well, you know, the, the best way to live your life is to live a life of, of self-denial and, uh, and discipline. And uh, the, the Confucianist uh, says, study the sacred classics, learn the rules of righteousness, follow the, the path of duty. So there are world religions and people can be religious and still be lost. But I'm so glad today that Jesus has made a way for us to be born again, to be washed in his blood and one day stare, stand before the Father and hear him say, well done, come on in to the joys of heaven. They're prepared for you. I don't about you, but I do know that today I've been born again and I'm on my way to heaven. How many of you know you're saved right now? Yeah. Hallelujah. So God is simply asking where you are and he's asking you today, where are you as it relates to your walk with the Lord? Are you walking in the spirit? You know, are, are you being led by the Holy Spirit? Are you following your flesh? So where are you as it relates to to your walk with the Lord. You know, the Bible says that you're to put off the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind uh, and put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Did you know that the Bible warns us? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Where are you? Where are you as it relates to the will of God? God has a, a perfect plan for your life. God has a perfect plan for your life. He has a perfect plan for your family. He has a perfect plan for this church. He even has a perfect plan for our nation. But unfortunately, people do not want to hear God's plan anymore. The Bible says the way of a man is not in himself. So in other words, we're trying to make all these plans and we're trying to do all these things that sometimes are against the will of God. And then we wonder why God is not blessing us. Why isn't he blessing our nation? Why isn't he blessing your family? Why isn't he blessing you as an individual? Every time that God dealt with the children of Israel and had to judge them, this is what came before. Check it out, look it up in your scripture. It says, they did that which was right in their own eyes, but they did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord. Did you hear that? They did what was right in their own eyes, but they did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. What are we doing today? Well, we've got new names for old sin so we can uh, you know, feel good. And uh, so we'll say abortion is not really abortion. It's, it's women's health and, and gay marriage is not gay marriage. It's marriage equality. And we come up with all these new names for old sins, but this new morality is still just the old immorality. Amen. 
So my question to you is this, are you doing what is right in the sight of the Lord? Are you doing what's right? Are you doing what's right in your own sight? Now here's the problem with that. It didn't say they were doing that which was wrong. They said they're trying to do what's right. In other words, they said, we're going to do what's right, but it's not right in the sight of God. It's only right in our eyes. And that's where we are as a nation today. So God is asking you, where are you? Now, here's the second question. Are you ready for this? Here's the second question. God says, you guys are in a trouble. You're in a mess. And I want to help you. But I've got to ask you, to whom are you listening? You've been listening to somebody. Somebody's been talking to you. Watch this. When God said of Adam that he sinned, the truth was that Adam sinned with his eyes wide open. So it became a different kind of sin. It was willful blindness. It was, it, it was uh, deliberate. On the other hand, it says of Eve that she was beguiled or deceived. Now, I want you to picture this. Two things happened. First of all, Satan got her alone. Anytime you can separate us from our connection, you can get us distracted and cause us, cause us to, uh, to sever our connection with God and with one another, we become vulnerable. Here she is alone. You notice he didn't come to her when Adam was with her. But when she was alone, he came to her. And the second thing that you'll notice is that she wasn't real clear about what God had said. And the reason for that is the revelation she had was second-handed. God said to Adam, in the day when you eat this fruit, you shall surely die. Hands off, don't touch it. That represents my sovereignty. You cannot be God. You can worship God, but you cannot be God. Don't try to be God. He told her, but it didn't come out that way. Apparently, she did not understand clearly what God had said. And isn't that what we're trying to do today? Hello, somebody. Aren't we trying to tell God, God, you're so good, you're so wonderful, you're so kind and merciful. Everything those Christians said about you was true. Every good thing's ever happened to me, it came from you. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with who is no variableness, neither shadow of turn. Surely you wouldn't send me to hell for this little old thing. Surely I wouldn't go to hell for this. Surely you wouldn't judge me for this. And that's exactly what Lucifer or Satan told our first parents, he got evil on. He said, now look, you know God's good. Look at all he's done. Look at all this. God is so good. Why in the world would God sentence you to death over this little old thing? Surely you don't believe that. And he posed the question like this. Has God said? Now God said it, but de the devil turned it around and tried to make it sound like he really didn't mean what he said. How many of you know the word of God is so clear that we don't need to misunderstand? Yeah. All scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And the devil said, well, God really didn't say it that way, did he? Who was she listening to? She was listening to the devil. You need to stop listening to the devil. You're going to get in trouble. Now, some people just bound and determined, I don't want to know what that Bible says. I'm tired of that. I, I was raised up that way, strict legalism. I'm sick and tired of people quoting scripture to me. I'm sick and tired of hearing, thus saith the Lord. I've got a mind. I can think for myself. Did you know that's where the first sin came in? When Lucifer said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I'll be like the most high. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to throw off all restraints and rebel against God Almighty. And God dropped, kicked him out of heaven. And that's where it all started. And now that same spirit is rising up in people today. Don't tell me what the word of God says. I don't want to know. Sometimes people will come to me for counseling. And we'll talk and we'll pray together. And they'll say, and they're so sincere. It breaks my heart because most of the time there'll be tears in their eyes and they'll look at me and as if to say, what do you think? And, and like I'm, I'm some kind of a repository of all wisdom and virtue. I'm just a man. And what do you think? 
What do you think? What do you think? And you know what? I'm tempted sometimes to tell them what I think. <laughs> but that's not what they need to hear. It's not really important what I think. I need to go to this and say, well, no, wait a minute. Hold it. Let's see what this says about it. Because God has already addressed every situation in your life. Every need that you have is right here. And the Bible says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So let's find out what this says. Amen. And let's, let's do what this says. You know, in just a few uh, uh, weeks from now, not this Wednesday, but the Wednesday following, I'm gonna start a series on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, how to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it's gonna be an exciting time because many of you are gonna find that you are, are, are ordained and, and called by God to begin to flow in, in the gifts of 1 Corinthians 12. But see, if I address uh, the operation of, of spiritual gifts, I can't just say, well, let me look at it through the lens of the 21st century. In 2017, it looks like that. That's, that's uh, irrelevant. I've got to go back to this and say, well, now, wait a minute. What does it say in 1 Corinthians chapters 12, 13, and 14 about spiritual gifts? And everything else, whether it's marriage or, or the, the way you, you your, your lifestyle, everything has to be judged by this. And somebody said, well, that's old. Well, something can be old and not be antiquated. It can be ancient and not be obsolete. This book is just as relevant and up to date as this morning's newspaper headlines. And I gotta tell you, it's more relevant because it came from God Almighty. It could be no more authoritative had God pinned it with his own hand. Somebody say amen. So, so stop listening to the world. Some of you have friends. They mean, well, they have the best of intentions, but they're getting you all messed up by giving you uh, advice and you say, oh, well, now if that's, I hadn't considered that. I'm gonna try to, to look at it that way. Don't look at it that way. Look at it this way. You'll never go wrong. Come on, somebody say a big amen. So the first question, where are you? This is a loving God looking for a, a, a lost couple. This is not God looking for somebody to thump their head off. The, Luke 19 and 10 says, the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And this morning, God is not looking for you to punish you. He's not looking for you to judge you because this is the age of grace. Why is he looking for you? Because he loves you and he wants to pick you up in, your, in his arms and love you. He wants to reach way down into the quagmire of sin and lift you up, hallelujah. He wants to plant your feet on the solid rock and, and, and put a new song in your mouth, even praise unto God. He wants to change your outlook on life. He wants to give you a brand new attitude. He wants to give you a hope and a future. That's why God's looking for us. Amen. And by the way, you're not paranoid. Somebody is following you. <laughs> and it's the Lord. And he loves you. And he's wanting to find you. So he says, where are you? He asks, to whom are you listening? Now, here's the third thing. Watch this. He says, what have you done? Do you even understand what you've done? Have you rejected Christ? Somebody said, what is it? hold it, hold it, time out. You got me wrong, preacher. I may be pretty hard-hearted, but I would never reject Christ. Every time you walk away without asking him to come into your heart, you are saying no. You say, oh, I'm not opposed to what you do. Y'all do your thing. Sing and preach and pray for people and give an altar call. It's just not my thing and I'm not ready. Every time you just simply walk out in silence, you have rejected him. And you're going to continue to do that until you hear God slam shut the gates of salvation in the face of your immortal soul. You cannot continue to trample under the foot, uh, underfoot the precious blood of Jesus Christ without which there is no remission of sins. You cannot sin against God and grieve his Holy Spirit by your disobedience and nothing happened. Eventually, ultimately, uh, he that being often reproved and hardened in his neck shall suddenly be destroyed. The Bible says, seek you the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord. And and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. He that covereth his sins, Proverbs 18, 3, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Amen. What have you done? Have you said no to God? Have you grieved his Holy Spirit? Have you said no again and again and again until you can't hear him anymore? You know, I'm not uh, the most physical man in the building. And don't say amen. I have 
very tender hands. When people shake hands with me, they say, oh, your hands are so soft. Well, that kind of hurts my feelings. <laughs> but there's a reason for it. Number one, I'm a preacher. So I don't use my hands in labor. And number two, I'm very lazy. <laughs> so stop hurting my feelings. But the reason I don't have calluses on my hands is because I don't work with my hands every day. Some of you do. Some of you are mechanics. Some of you are carpenters. Some of you have calluses on your hands. And that's good because when you start your work day tomorrow and you pick up something, it won't hurt. You won't feel it. Now, here's the downside. You won't feel it. You could get hurt because you don't feel it. The same thing is true of our hearts. Sometimes we get a callus on our heart. Why? Because we heard it so much. At first it sounds like this. I love you. Come home. I love you. God, is that you? I love you. I hear you, God. But I'm busy. I hear you, but I got to go home. There's a football game today I want to see. I love you. Okay, God, I get it. I love you. Is that my granddaughter? I love you. <laughs> She's saying, I love you too. But watch what happens. Watch what happens. Who can I use? Pastor Shannon, come on out here. Now, you've been called Sacra, Sacra, and there was a brand new one today on 411. Sa no, sa sacra. 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 So, Pastor, Sacra, I'm going to be the Holy Ghost, and you are an old sinner. Can you deal with that? I love you! <laughs> I love you! Keep going. I love you! I love you. I love you. Keep going. I love you. I love you. Did I ever stop telling him? And God never will. He'll never stop telling you. Even when you can't hear him, he still say, I love you. Come on. I love you. Listen to me. I love you. If you can still hear him, even if it's very faint, my advice to you this morning is to say, speak to me, Lord. Don't let me go to hell while you're telling me you love me. Don't let me miss out while you're talking to me. It's time for us to pray together. You ready? Let's pray together right now. Come on, let's do it. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I know you love me. I give my heart and my life to you. Take control of my life. Do everything you promised that you would do, and I will live for you and serve you by your help and grace. Thank you for hearing my prayer. I give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now somebody's standing by to pray with you again. If you'll call 804-744-8881. That's 804-744-8881. And by the way, when you call, request the message, Life's Three Greatest Questions, and we'll send it to you absolutely free on CD. One more time, the number to call, 804 804- 744-8881. After you give your life to Christ, the most important thing is to find the right church, a Bible-believing church, a Christ-centered church, a Spirit-filled church. Join me this Sunday, please, at Victory Tabernacle. I know you'll be glad you did. Two full hours of praise and worship ministry from the Word of God and always a time together in His presence around the altar. And don't forget, the last Sunday and every month is our Miracle Sunday. That means we have an additional service at 6 o'clock in the chapel. All of our services are live streamed, so you can go to our website. That's victorytab.org, 
and check it out. You can watch us over Ustream or Facebook. During the middle of the week, we're here in our family enrichment night service beginning at 7 o'clock with something that's fun, exciting, and relevant for every age group and every member of the family. Royal Rangers for the Boys, Missionettes for the Girls, a dynamic youth program for teens, a ministry to college and career age young people, and always I'm teaching in the main sanctuary and our Hispanic congregation will meet in the chapel. For more information, call us now at 804-744-8881 or go to our website, victorytab.org. By the way, when you go to our website, check out our 24-hour radio internet network called Victory Battle Cry. I know you'll love it. Thank you so much for being with us today. As this new year winds down, or the old year winds down, and we're about to enter into a brand new year, I believe God has something awesome and wonderful for you. Just make your mind up that beginning this new year, it's going to be a new life for you in Christ. I thank you for joining me today. God bless you. And until we're together again, just like this around the Word of God, this is Pastor Sam reminding you that here at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings the victory and miracles still happen. Everyone struggles from time to time. It could be the loss of a loved one. The unmistakable feeling of loneliness and rejection. Maybe we're looking for a friendly smile or a warm hug from someone who really cares. Jesus always sees us when we're hurting and when we're broken. He hears our cries and comes to us at our point of need. Jesus never rejected anyone, and neither do we at Victory Tabernacle, the place you've been looking for. latest Victory Tab information by going to Facebook just by typing in Victory Tab into your Facebook search. You can also join us in conversation by going to Twitter or Instagram typing in Victory Tab RVA.